My name is Josh. You're on the Josh. And uh, I'm going to be um, talking tonight, really tying in with what Roger just preached. How to receive it. And how to stay in it. In the midst of the shakings, not only that are coming, but maybe shakings that you're experiencing right now in your own life. Because there are things coming, but there are also things that we're experiencing now that the Lord desires to prepare for us in that day. So I'd love to journal. How many of you like to journal? Amen. And I, I love it because the Lord brings back so many things. As I go back to journals, or the Lord will bring back phrases to me. So a couple months ago, the Lord brought this phrase back to me that I'd written about three years ago. And the phrase is this. Holiness and hunger are the only safe place. And so as shakings are happening now, and as things are happening in the days to come, I believe there are two main things or two main areas that are going to be that are our safety. And so tonight I want to unpack these with you. As Roger already already said, and it's so good, there's an there is an urgency. That we see around the world, more things are happening. There's more crisis, there's more things around the nations. That are either happening and that are escalating. And so, being a Christian and uh, call, and being uh, calling yourself a Christian, having that relationship is good. But knowledge will only take you so far. What I believe is that holiness and hunger are like guardrails. If you're driving down a road, holiness and hunger on either side. The scripture says the way is narrow, amen? That, that leads to life. And as things get harder, and the pressures increase, the temptation is to live unholy and to be lukewarm. Holiness and hunger are also indicators of where my heart is at. If I don't desire to live holy, and I don't have spiritual hunger, I'm not saying 100%, but if it's not a consistent thing or if there's months or even years that go by, where I don't desire to live holy and hungry, and that, that could be that's a danger. And so, I want to talk about the place of safety. So how do we stay in this place of safety? Before I do that, I want to talk about some things that aren't places of safety. 
Եվ դրա այդ կապված ես ուզում եմ խոսել այնպիսի բան այն մասին որտեղ կապահովություն չեն In Matthew 24 Jesus tells us that lawlessness will increase Մաթեոս 24-ում Հիսուսն ասում է մոս որ անօրինությունը կշատանա and the love of many will grow cold Եվ շատերի սերը կսարչի And I believe this happens there's multiple factors that influence this Եվ ես հավատում եմ որ սա տեղի ունենում մի հերկե կան շատ գործոններ որոնց պատճառով դա այդպես է But I believe the uh, the thing that excels us the most is a lack of desire and hunger for Jesus. But just kartsum em te inch ne aveli shatatsnum es vichaka ayn vor chka tsankutsun yev kharts Isusi handeb and a lack of holiness. Yev nunpes chka sarputsun. And so uh, I wrote down some things here that are things that are I call them illusions of safety or the things that you think are safe but aren't. Yes, we can banal am ester kedaret voronk kochvum en apohovutsian patrank kam banal voronk mestvum en apohovutsun en talis mes bats yakam drank chen talis. These are things that as Christians if we're not careful we can look at and think that these are these aren't bad things but we can look at these and they can deceive us. Կան բաներ, որոնք մենք որպես քրիստոներ կարող ենք դրանց նայել, մտածենք, ոտենք այնքան է վատ չեն, եւ դենք կարող են մեզ խափել։ First is our gifting or our talents. Առաջինը, մեր բարքևները կամ տաղանդները։ The second would be anointing. Եկրորդը օծությունը or position. Դիրքը even approval of godly people. Նույնիսկ աստվածապաշտ մարդկանց հավանությունը even encounters with God. Եվ նույնիսկ հանդիպումներ աստծո հետ։ And uh, these things aren't bad or wrong but they can be illusions because uh in especially in today's day and age and in, in especially in the western church in america where i'm from so much is put on who is on the platform ais banere irenk irentsov iharke vat chen pes den kaoran mezanum patrank haratsasnel kan vor այսօրվա եկեղեցում հատկապես մեզ մոտ արեմուտքում այնքան մեծ շշտադրում է այն բանի վրա թե օրինակ ով է կանգնած ամբիոնի ետևում Or who is leading worship? Kam ove arachnortum yeket pagutsune. Or how many albums have been sold? Kam khani zainaska varaknel en vacharel. Or how many followers they have on social media? Kam khani hetevortnel es martik unan sotsialakan tsantserum. And the Lord can use all of these things, but these things are not a true place of safety. Tere ka ure oktagortsel ais amena, bats da apahovutsian chushmalit vaire che. Platforms personalities and charisma bemere anhatakanutsuna oshtvatsutsuna will not stand in the days to come chen dimana galikolerum and as a result the things attached to them will also fail ye vorpes artsunk ayn amene inch vor katsvats es dran noynpes enknelu e and so the encouragement is to find safety to, to find safety in this place of hunger and holiness ayn pes vor im khrakhusank nedzes gtnel apohovutsun քաղցի հոգեվոր քաղցի եւ սրբության մեջ and i loved uh, as i was leading worship tonight i loved your hunger yeah, i, I just looked out everyone singing առաջնորդելով եկեղեցին ինձ այնքան դուր եկավ ձեր հոգեվոր քաղցը ես նայում եի բոլորը երկում էին you weren't fixated by who was on the platform դուք չեք կենտրոնացած այն բանի վրա թե ով է բեմի վրա you love to worship jesus այլ դուք սիրով երկեր պագում եք հիսուսին and that that is a gift եւ դա պարգև է So don't take that for granted. Եվ դա հենց այնպես մի ընդունեք, դա հասարակ բան չէ։ And this isn't in the notes. I just I felt this I heard this phrase as I was sitting down front. I I I feel that the father is pleased with you. Եվ ես լսեցի մի այսպիսի բան իմ ներսում եւ որ նստած է այդտեղ ես զգում եմ որ դուք հաճելի եք հորը։ He says well done. Նա ասում է ապրեք։ Amen. 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 All right, so next I want to talk about holiness. Այս պիսով ես ուզում եմ հիմա խոսել արդեն սրբության մասին. And what that looks like and how we can walk in holiness. Ինչ պիսին է դա, ինչպես մենք կարող ենք վարվել սրբության մեջ։ So the call for holiness is not new. Սրբության կան չնոր չէ։ From the very beginning and throughout the scripture, the scripture is clear. Ամեն ասկզբից եւ ողջ աստվածաշնչում սուրբ գիրքը բարձ է խոսում։ We must walk holy. Մենք պետք է սուրբ վարվենք։ In Hebrews 12 verse 14. Եբ բացնի 12 14. It says make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Գրված է ամեն ջանքարեք որ խաղաղության ապրեք բոլորդ եւ սուրբ լինեք 
without holiness no one will see the lord Now, I personally believe that there's two applications to this. I believe the main application is seeing the Lord in the day to come. But I also believe there's uh, places of encounter or revelation where you see Jesus through the word or through worship or through prayer. And holiness is necessary for both of these. So I want to talk about what is, what is holiness, kind of defining holiness a little bit here. The holiness, and when we think of holiness, if, if you were to ask someone, What is holiness? We might immediately think of outward behavior. Things that we do or don't do. And all of that is true. There are things as we walk holy that we don't want to do. And there are other things that we do want to do. But I want to be clear. Holiness is a person. Jesus is holiness defined. And so, um, this illustration that I have is between legalism and holiness. And so, uh, I'm going to volunteer this wonderful gentleman. You just, just stand there, you don't have to do it. Okay, so, uh, so this gentleman is a sincere believer. And um, let's say, let's pretend there's someone standing next to him. That would represent the world, and there's a little bit of space between them. And so most most Christians and most of the much of the Christian world does walk in a measure of holiness, where they're going to look maybe a little bit different than the world. But much of it is achieved through their own zeal, their own striving, and their own righteousness. But walking holiness is more than just behavior modification. Walking in holiness begins by receiving something that you don't have. And so, just, I'm, I, I'm, so I'm God over here. Without being irreverent. So, in order for this gentleman to, re- to walk in true holiness, he has to receive something. It's called grace. And in Christ Jesus, we have abundant grace. We have all the grace that we need to walk in holiness. And so we have to let go of our own self-righteousness, our own striving, our own works. And then we can receive Grace. And this is the this is beginning uh, our walk of holiness. And so, and so we have a scripture here to tie this in. Hebrews 12, verse 10. And this is in the context of the, the Lord's discipline. It says they disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our, for our good. That we may share in His holiness. What an incredible thought. That God 
wants and desires us to share in his holiness, the very holiness that he is. But it has no, absolutely nothing to do with us or what we can bring to the table. And so in order to live holy, we must partake of something bigger than our own zeal, efforts, and works. And another aspect here with holiness is the issue of obedience. So obedience is clear in Scripture. This is another place where we can position ourselves to live holy. In 1 Peter 1, verse 14 and 15, as obedient children do not be conformed to the former lusts, which were yours in ignorance, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. And so it begins by receiving grace first. Because true, true obedience flows out of being able to receive grace. And so, like Roger was sharing earlier, living the Christian life is all about what we receive. As a worship leader, I could be the greatest singer, piano player, know all of the great songs. But unless I receive from the secret place and get filled by God, then everything that I try to do on stage is just empty. And as a result, if I'm not careful, if I live that way for a while, I began to put my trust in those things that aren't safe. And so there's, obviously we could spend so much time in holiness, but I just wanted to break down a little bit of it for you. And so next I want to talk about hunger, which is the second part of this phrase that I got. And so hunger is really a spiritual barometer for us. If we, if we aren't in the same thing in the natural, if we're uh, not hungry for a long period of time, then that usually means there's something wrong. I have three children, 10 and under. And if they're not constantly eating throughout the day, I immediately think there's something wrong. Can anyone agree with this? They love to eat. What? And I love being in this country. Because you love bread. I love bread too. Just a side note. And so in Psalm 631, David understood that the world is dry and has absolutely nothing to offer him. He says this, he, he says, Oh God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. And so the deception of the world and of religion 
եւ կրոնի մոլորությունը is that it can satisfy us այն է որ դա կարող է մեզ բավականություն տալ but david understood by the spirit davita has katsav hokov that the world has absolutely nothing to offer որ այս աշխարհը բոլորովին ոչ ինչ չունի մեզ առաջարկելու there, there is only one source of life kam yain meg kan kyakh pyur and in the wisdom and design of god yef astso tsragri imastutsuna he designed it that we would not live by bread alone aine vor na tsragri na voroshela vor mek mein hatsov chun kapdelo but by every word that comes from his mouth al amen mi khoskov vor galis na belanits and this is because we are first and foremost yef patjarnaine vor menk nakhevarach spiritual beings hokevoreak nereng This is how God designed it that we would live by his word. Եվ աստված այդպես է որոշել որ մենք ապրենք նաև իր խոսքով. What again what the world and uh dead religion Եվ որ մենք խոսում ենք աշխարհի եւ մահացած կրոնի մասին they empty they offer us empty just carbohydrates. Նրանք ուղղակի առաջարկում են այսպես ասած դատարկ ասխաջրեր we're eating but and we feel full menk utu menk menk lzvel enk arten teg chka but we're not actually being nourished or satisfied bites menk sunun chenk statsel yev chenk kshtatsel now god the, what we need bites inch inch mes petk is we need that word from god mes petk ya khos kastuts to feed our soul and our spirit but bisi mer anze yev mer hokin kerakervaslen this is the safety this is part of the safety mer apohovutsyan mi masa of receiving the word of god in the midst of pressures in the midst of tribulation yep we make stand men kasto khos ket nuis ket mes shurj nerutsyunneren nuis ket mes shurj patohasneren we must be desperate for it men ket ke husahatoren zgtenk dran and we need his word yep mes ket ke nera khoska not just principles voch te miain skzbunknere but we need that word from heaven that makes everything make sense even when things don't make sense al mespet ke ait khos ke yerken kits vor imastavorum e amen inch mes shurj nuis ke te mer hangamanknere vor ev ban chen imastavorum and with god being satisfied means you're always hungry as so het kshtatsats linel e ain e vor duk misht kakhtsatsek which means you're always dependent inch nashnakum e vor duk misht kakhvatsek neranits and first peter i believe it says like newborn babes Եվ առաջին Պետրոսում է ասում գրված է որպես նորածին մանուկներ long for the pure milk of the word Պապագեկ խոսքի անարատ կաթին And so being hungry is actually a place of safety Այն պես որ քաղցած հոր լինելը հոգևոր քաղց ունալ է իրականում ապահովության վայրը Because it means you're dependent on a source outside of yourself Որտեվ դա նշանակում է դու կախված եք մի աղբյուրից որը գտնվում է ձեզ անես դուրս But the danger is it, we we have to make a decision and make a choice what am I going to feed on եւ տվտանգը հետեւյալն է մենք մշտապես պետք է որոշենք մշտապես պետք է վճարենք ինչ եմ ես ուտելու ինչով եմ ես սնվելու will i receive grace արդյոք ես կընթունեմ շնորհքը or will i where or will i feed my flesh թե ես սկսեմ կերակրել իմ մարմինը and so being hungry is actually a comfort to us because it is a positive indicator այն պես որ հոգևոր քաղց ունենալը դա դրական ցուցանիշ է that our spiritual health is good vol men hokevol a vol men hokevol apes agogchen kor men agogchun e lave and it is a safeguard against apathy and hard heartedness yev da nuinpes apohovutsyun e antalbelutsyan yev khastasartutsyan dem and so a hard heart is, is not a hungry heart khastatsvat sirte khartsat sirt che and so here's the good news badi lude hetevelne having a hungry heart kakhtsat sirt unenale the lord loves hunger te sidume mel kakhtsa and when we're hungry for him yefo mel kakhtsun ank nera handep he always will satisfy na mashtapes kkshtatsni mes and i was thinking about um i have my wife uh what came you like bedem imknochits i was thinking about as we've been talking about jesus being our bridegroom Եթե որ մենք խոսում ենք այն մասին որ Հիսուսը մեր փեսան է and us being his bride եւ մենք նրա հարցն ենք I was thinking about my wife Yes I'm not sure I'm going to watch my feeling safe over apa hovelens go and I was thinking about even though we have a house and we have cars մենք ունենք տուն մենք ունենք մեքենաներ and I have a job to put food on the table Yes ունեմ աշխատանք ես կարող եմ մատակարարել իմ ընտանիքի համար 
Ultimately, those things alone cannot provide safety. In the same way as believers, knowing, uh, knowing uh, principles, um, going to church, uh, all the Christian principles, will not uh, satisfy. But when I express my love to her and she receives it, that's when she feels the safest. And in the same way, when we come and we have hunger in our hearts for Jesus, he says, great, I have hunger in my heart for you. I, am, I love you with all of my heart. I, I think the biggest lie of the enemy is that if we're hungry for God and we go after him, is that he will let us down. But because he is this bridegroom with jealous, deep, intense love for us, he always responds to hunger. And as we receive his love, it makes us hungry for more. And in the same way, in a natural marriage, as my wife receives my love, it makes her want to love me more. And so, this is a place of safety for us. Because I could lose my house or lose material things. And even though that would be very difficult, there's this place of love and safety that she has by receiving my love. This is the, this is the invitation of our bridegroom. That as we receive grace to live holy, and as we as we live in obedience to forsake the things of the world, and as we hear his word, we are kept safe in the shakings to come. And so, if we, as we share in God's holiness, we see his perspective on things. We can see it his way. And so many times, I know in my own personal life, God has been shaking things, trying to let, get me to let go of them, because he's seeing things way differently than I am. And in my own stubbornness, I say, no, Lord, this is good for me. But he says, no, I want those things are actually harmful for you. And so, as, we, as we're living and as we're moving forward to the things to come, even now the Lord desires to shake things on our own life out of his jealous love for us so that we can receive love that he wants to give to us and there's been so many times in my own life when I finally let go and I finally see what I was holding on to was a, was a thing of danger. And then I can receive 
what he wants to give to me. And so my encouragement for you tonight is to is very simple. It's not to do more. It's not to try harder. It's to be, sit before the Lord and receive his grace. Open up your heart and receive and ask the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of your understanding to receive love. Ask for fresh hunger. And I think, as Roger was sharing earlier, you know, us being Americans, we have almost zero concept of what it means to walk through real suffering. If someone, if someone uh, posts a, a hateful comment on Facebook, we label it as persecution. We don't know what we're talking about. And so I say all that to say this, is that as many times as you're walking through hurt and pain, it's hard to open up again. It's hard to receive. But the Lord says, open up your heart and receive the love I have for you. And so that's my encouragement for you tonight. That there is much safety as we live holy, as we receive His grace, and we live a hungry life that's rooted in the love of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.